Yo, today I'm gonna run through the updates to um, Axis Tools. We're on V5 now, so first I'll run over the changes to the current existing tool set. We've got drag and drop changes. Biggest change for that is probably the added support for Arnold Procedural and RS proxies. So it'll be brought in as a big list now, and I've removed the procedural and proxy import shelf tools just to keep the tools a bit more concise. If your files includes environment variables like hip, home, or job, it will now prompt you and ask you if you want to include that in your file name instead of an absolute path. And a little workflow tweak, which is uh, PBR materials, will find the, the newest uh, material to connect to, whether that's a standard surface or a, a Redshift material. Focus Pick has got some bug fixes and changes. If you control click on the shelf tool now, you'll get a, a shiny new focus object parameter. So you can stick in a null or whatever object you want into there and it will gray out your, your focus and, and set the focus amount. Uh, and I've also added support for switcher cameras as well. So if your camera's inside a switcher, it'll find it and it will allow you to set the focus on it now. Active camera setting uh, has had a tweak, a few tweaks and, and fixes too. So I've added support for all first party renders in 17.5. Uh, so that's OpenGL, Mantra and RenderMan. Now for the epic new stuff, <laughs> we've got um, a couple switchers, which uh, I've always wanted shortcuts for, but I was just too lazy to make the tools. So there's an expand VOP. And we've also got the update mode switcher. Uh, and then we've got some, some new digital assets, new HDAs. So uh, first one is Ripple, and this basically takes two inputs. First input is geometry that is going to be displaced or rippled, and the second input is for your points, and it will take the normals and stuff like that. You can do it on you know whatever shaped object you want, uh, and there's a bunch of maps that you can plug into it, so like you can control the opacity of the the ripple or the size of the ripple based on whatever attribute you want. And the next the next hill kind of uh, ties into that a bit as well. So we've got conditional fade which is our second HDA. It's solver based and it activates when a condition is met. So for example, uh, like when CD is over five, the HDA will spit out a frame and the time when the condition was met. And you can visualize this as well uh, and add like a little fade. You can see there's a ramp there um, and offset it as well. Um, so in this example, the frame attribute is used to offset the instances in time and the visualize attribute was used to control the opacity of the ripple on the water there. And now we've got Extract 2, which is a UI based tool. Um, I don't really use Extract 1, but I've kept it in there just because it's got some extra options that Extract 2 doesn't. But uh, I was finding myself not using it as much because uh, I build hips a bit differently now. So I built Extract 2, which is basically built around the way that I work. <laughs> So it allows you to extract up, down, left or right from the initial node uh, and uh, no overlaps will happen. It will, you know, keep going up and down um, the same distance each time. And you have some preferences as well for a few parameters as well, such as, you know, adding out to your null or not adding out to your null, uh, having a null or not having a null, uh, and controlling the distance that the geo node has moved on X and Y. And if your extract window will close automatically after the extraction. If you turn this off, you can continue to extract more SOPs after this, you know, first one's done. As you might have seen in some of the screen recordings, some of the tools that will benefit from it have been added to the tab menu and are only available, you know, like in the network that they should be used in. So, you know, like extract is only available in the SOP net, you know, like active camera is only available in, in your driver ROP net. Um, but things like uh, append, copied is available everywhere because you can literally use it in any network. It's probably my most used tool. Finally, we've got a new UI tool addition, which is, is probably the biggest uh, addition in this update. It's a file replacer slash manager, which allows you to quickly see missing textures, replace them or replace specific terms. For example, replacing a lower res, you know, LOD3 shader with like LOD0. Uh, you can group duplicate textures into one column, so you can quickly go and replace all of them in one go. Or you can, you know, have it, you know, one row per node. You can do that too. Um, you can filter the list, you know, a couple options there, starts with or includes. 
you can copy paths, open file locations, and you can select all the nodes that are included in that column as well. So yeah, lots of options here. So um, it's available up in the render tools, and it's also available as a, a Python panel, which you can open up. So yeah, uh, any questions, comments, email me, whatever. Uh, any suggestions for updates, we'd appreciate that too. And I'll see you in the next one.